This is the December 4th, 2014 meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. Could we have the roll call, please, Mr. Sizemore? Mrs. Dealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Ling? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? Ms. Hartle? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, I don't believe so. Dr. Antwistle, would you give your report, please? Oh, okay. I will. Um, I have some quick items uh, that I want to provide to you as updates in advance of a topic that I'd like to focus on in tonight's report. The quick updates include um, our art and science modules, um, uh, which is our across the district uh, education effort at every school. Um, and this month, uh, we are rolling out the art and science module number three. I think it's important to know that these are custom grown right here in Scarborough. We are using Marzano materials, but we are actually developing each of those um, modules. And this module number three, which is being delivered in December, um, will have an emphasis on strengthening and deepening the professional learning that's happening in our professional learning teams, which is a, a good thing. Uh, second, the Marzano performance evaluation pr uh, professional growth model. I think it's important for everybody to know that the preparation and rollout of the planned pilot project is uh, going very, very well and is on schedule. Uh, we've had more than 20 teachers uh, volunteer to be um, sort of our guinea pigs, our, the, the, the test participants in this pilot. And, um, and they are getting some advanced uh, training in terms of the system and some orientation to that. I think it's critically important as well to know that the Leadership Council has uh, designated um, as part of every one of our Leadership Council meetings uh, time that we spend in learning both the eye observation system, which is the Marzano evaluation system, and um, as well we're getting oriented to the I Academy, which is the collection of all of the Marzano resources that are available for professional development, and they are amazing. They include videos, um, sample lessons, uh, you name it, it's, and it's in a very, very extensive library. This is a great, very robust um, uh, program, and, and the, the more I, I know from a, my uh, uh, perspective, the more I see it, the more I get involved, the more I'm into the system and getting ready to, we're all getting ready to do observation walkthroughs uh, with those test teachers, um, I am really impressed with the, the system. Um, the classroom, I have a classroom uh, visiting schedule that continues to keep me very busy. Um, I find myself in classrooms almost every day. And I am pleased to share with the board that I see great things and I'm hearing very positive feedback from both new and veteran teachers about the work that they're doing, the excitement they have about the, the work that they're doing, and the support that they're receiving within each of their schools. So that's a, a, a good report. Um, what I want to do is I want to share a, a video with you and as a bit of an introduction. Let me just tell you that this uh, video was, meant, was made at, um, at the Wentworth School. Um, these are all Wentworth students, and they are going to tell you about this thing called Hour of Code. This is about five minutes. <laughs> Sorry, that again. Mm -mm. 
sorry, it worked earlier. There, there comes Kelly. I can't wait. I'm getting excited. <laughs> it's almost here. Our code. Our code is a one-hour instruction designed to take the mystery out of computer science and so that anyone can learn the basics. Tens of millions of students of all ages have tried it. Wentworth School will be joining other students worldwide to participate in this year's Hour of Code. Why are we doing Hour of Code, you ask? <laughs> <laughs> when we grow up, there will be a huge need for computer programmers. The number of computer science jobs are even three times faster than the number of computer science graduates. At this rate, by 2020, there will be more than 1 million computing, computing jobs on sales. These are great jobs. 90% of our schools don't teach computer science. This means 90% of kids don't have the experiences that will prepare them for technology jobs in the future. Everybody knows technology is moving fast. It shouldn't be passing us by. We all depend on technology to help us. But how does technology actually work? Computers can't do anything unless they're given a set of instructions that make it do something. A computer program is actually a set of instructions, like a recipe. The legends have to follow them step by step to get the right end result. Computers can be really smart, but they can only do what someone tells them to do. The directions are actually written instructions that get entered into the computer. Who writes these instructions? Computer programmers, also known as coders. Programming is how sites like Facebook, games like Minecraft, and apps like Instagram are made. Knowing how to program is like having a superpower. It's a skill that not only teaches you how to work with computers, but also teaches you how to think about solving problems. Programming is fun and easy. Learning these skills isn't just important for your future. It's important for our country's future. If we want America to stay on the cutting edge, we need young Americans like you to master the tools and technology that will change the way we do just about everything. That's why I'm asking you to get involved. Don't just buy a new video game. Make one. Don't just download the latest app. Help design it. Don't just play on your phone. Program it. Hour of Code at Wentworth is really a two-hour event. One hour will be a rotation. Groups of three classes will rotate through four presenters, spending 10 minutes with each presenter. The presenters will talk about the importance of learning to code, show what a computer program really does, and how it makes the computer work. Presenters will also help students understand the process of developing an app or other program. Some presenters will even involve students in some unplugged activities that involve coding skills. The other hour will be using your laptop to do an hour of code. You will be given a website to visit and you will select coding activities from there. This will be your first taste of programming. We all depend on technology to communicate, to bank, and none of us know how to read and write code. The first program I wrote asked uh, things like, what's your favorite color? Or how old are you? I wrote a program to play tic-tac-toe. I first learned how to make a green circle and a red square appear on the screen. You're just trying to make something, trying to transfer something from your mind to the computer or to a, to a tablet. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's an experience. The whole limit in the system is just that there just aren't enough people who are trained and have these skills today. The programmers of tomorrow are the wizards of the future. You know, you're going to look like you have magic powers compared to everybody else. Great coders are today's rock stars. That's it.
available to you during your classroom's hour of code time. They all seem like fun and games. But they're really helping you to understand how a set of directions can make a computer work. You might get stuck or hit roadblocks. It's okay. The idea is to experiment, try things, and figure it out on your own. Even though this is a few hours of our time, the learning goes way beyond that. It doesn't matter how old you are. Anyone can still do it. It's actually easy to learn. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. Whether you're a young man or a young woman, whether you live in a city or a rural area, computers are going to be a big part of your future. And if you're willing to work and study hard, that future is yours to shape. If you are a video game player, a book lover, an artist, a TV junkie, a sports lover, or a computer user, Hour of Code has something in store for you. So what you've just seen is the video that was made at Wentworth by Wentworth Kids for Wentworth Kids in introducing this Hour of Code. So um, let me just give you uh, some details about what's happening in the Scarborough Public Schools. Preparations are underway for students at all of our schools to participate in the Hour of Code, which you now know what that is. It's a massive global event designed to engage students in computer science by providing online and offline coding activities. The goal this year is to reach 100 million students by the end of 2014. The event kicks off December 8th and it runs through the 14th. Last year over 15 million students across 170 countries participated, providing students with the opportunity to explore how to code a computer or write software is a really important opportunity, not only in learning more about how computers work, but it also promotes critical thinking creativity, which are, as we know, important skills for the future. This year, with the assistance of Scarborough's technology coaches, planning has been underway for several weeks. All students at the primary school, yes, K-1-2, will be involved in learning about coding through a variety of activities. One of these involves learning how to program a B-Bot to move from one location to a destination in order to pollinate a flower. So they're actually writing code to move this bee bot to get it in the right place to pollinate the flower. Kind of cool. Mm. At Wentworth School, as you saw, all students will be participating in a series of events on one day, December 10th. They'll be online working through tutorials uh, where they'll be able to learn some code. Students will also be learning more about coding from computer scientists, programmers who are volunteering their time to share what they do. And in preparation, students have created and produced uh, this informal video that will be uh, shared with their peers um, in advance of the event. At the middle school, the computer club has created a promotional video as well that students will view prior to the week of the events. During the week of December 8th, next week, all middle school students will be participating in online coding activities during their science classes. In preparation, all staff has, have access to the Hour of Code resources to experience coding so that they can help support the students and what the students are exploring. At the high school, where all students are unable to participate online, given the limited access to computers, the plans are still going ahead and will involve encouraging as many students as possible to participate. Promotional announcements are being made, encouraging students to participate during study halls in the library computer lab, uh, which will be reserved for the purpose of the Hour of Code. A portion of the freshman class will participate through their technology courses. I had the pleasure of being in one of those technology courses today, and I got to see some kids present their, one of, uh, their sort of wrapping up and presenting some final projects. Um, one freshman boy got up there, and it, I have to tell you, it was, uh, it was truly unbelievable what he did in terms of finding the code and inserting the code, and he was, creating a, he was creating his own website that was a website that would tell people about his favorite um, video games to play. Do they still call them video games? Is that what they're called? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. And, you know, I was just like, I was blown away. And he's like, he was very disappointed that he actually had not, you know, gotten to the point of activating this thing, but, but he had spent 
hours and hours and hours on it. It was really, it was very impressive and, and actually pretty exciting. The other portion will participate in the spring semester, the other portion of um, uh, freshmen, I guess. And uh, planning is underway to involve additional students in coding activities at a later date in an effort to promote a proposed new course in computer sciences. Um, <clears throat> the folks that have been really um, key in this are uh, Courtney Graffius, uh, Joellen Clive at the middle school. Courtney is uh, K-2, and she's also the K-12 technology instructional coach. Um, and uh, Holly Grafham uh, at the middle school as well. And I'm sure that there are many more people that have been involved. I know uh, Alicia. Alicia. And, um, and I know that Monique has taken a very active um, role in getting involved. So I, I thought this was, this is coming up next week. Um, and uh, as you can see, we're pretty excited about it. And it's nice to be part of something that is uh, national and global. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And 6.0 is the TS report. Um, we have the committee assignments to announce this evening. And so I'm going to go right through them. <coughs> Correct me if I have anything wrong. We've got quite a bit here. Um, we have a little bit of a change in our finance um, committee. So for chair, Chris Christopher Chiazzo, Christine Massengill will join him, and as will I, Donna Bealy. Um, and again, um, all, all board members are invited to attend our finance meetings. For negotiations, Jackie Perry will be chair, Kelly Murphy will join her, Christine Massengill will join her. I will be the alternate in that position. On policy, Kelly Murphy will chair, joined by Jody Shea and Jane Lang. Communications, Jody Shea will chair, joined by Kelly Murphy and myself. For liaison positions within the legislature, Jackie Perry will be our contact. Teacher evaluation will be done by Jane Lang. The Sebago Alliance Group will be done by Christine Massengill. Health, Safety, and Security Advisory Team will be done by Kelly Murphy. Education and Business Council will be Christopher Chiazzo. And finally, vo vocational will be done by Jody Shea. Any questions? Okay. If we could just uh, get a copy of that, Donna, um, sure. so that, so that Kelly has one. that. We, we do up a, a format and, and put that all together. So. Um, yesterday, I attended the assessment conference. Uh, we had quite a few people uh, in our district who went to that. Um, most of them are from uh, the, the work being done for teacher evaluation. The conference was amazing. Um, it, it's hard to know where to begin to explain it to somebody who doesn't know a whole lot about assessment work, and that includes me. Um, I heard a new term yesterday. It's called assessment literacy, and that is who are the experts and how do we know how to develop assessments that are valid, reliable, how to develop questions that make sense for the work that you're teaching, and then um, how do we put it all together in order to take a look at uh, ways in which we can add that component to a teacher's evaluation. It, it, it is amazing work. It will take hundreds of hours of our staff in order to figure out this work. Fortunately, our, our district is well underway in terms of the upfront work that we have done um, that we have been telling you about right along for the past year and a half. So uh, it, it was an exciting conference, but also really spoke volumes to me about the same message that we received two weeks ago from our principals, which was time. We need time to do this work. So I think that's, that's my message to you all. Um, I had the good fortune to sit behind, coincidentally, Senator Millett when I was at the Muskie Institute Recognition Program a couple of weeks ago at USM. 
so I, I got involved in her on the, on the um, topic of what about computers for the Smarter Balance Assessment that's coming up this spring that I know you are all concerned about for our high school students. How are they going to take up to six hours of, of testing um, and have no computers to do it on? So what has really come down now is that from the Department of Ed, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Sizemore, um, the schools are being notified very fairly recently that they uh, need to submit to the state uh, what their issues are around that assessment, what are their problems going to be, what are their needs going to be in order so that all those kids can, can take the testing. Now remember, it's three through eight and grade 11. So um, I'm, I'm assuming you have received that and, and so each town is being asked to let the state know. What the, what the problems are. So I was kind of glad to hear that, but I won't be happy until I know what the answers are. Right. Um, finally, um, I have invited Mr. Babine, um, a new uh, member of the town council. He is the finance chair from the town council, and he is the liaison to the school board. So I, he's going to introduce himself and talk to us a little bit. So why don't you take the microphone? You're not using the new little thing the council is using, right? Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute, we, we installed the trap door as well. <laughs> we talked about it last night. I'm going to tell you watching thing to your um, arm. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I got to tell you, uh, watching that video was incredible because um, I always like to try to break the ice a little bit. Uh, 14 years ago, I had a chance to get elected to the school board in which I sat with Miss Perry, and uh, my little uh, eight-year-old is now a 22-year-old senior in college, so. It aged me a little bit watching those young people talking about computers and the work that you guys have done. So I think it's absolutely incredible um, of what you've done. Um, I'm not going to go through a long uh, introduction. I think just about everyone I've been introduced to at some point. Um, just a quick background. I've been in town for uh, about 20 years. I served on the school board for two from 2000 to 2002. So I've uh, uh, dealt with what you're dealing with, um, even though on a much shorter basis and a much uh, different time and on a very different administration. And I've actually served on the town council, as you know, uh, three previous terms, a little bit broken up in there for having moved out of town, and now I'm back and uh, enjoying life of uh, living permanently here in Scarborough. Um, the purpose of coming here wasn't really the introductions. It's more about to convey a message of support by our town council. We understand and we share in the commitment that we have to our schools, and we know that a big part of that commitment requires us to build a relationship. And so. Uh, Jessica Holbrook, our new chairperson, has asked me to take on the job of being finance chair, which I've had in the past, and we know it's going to be a very difficult year dealing with the state, dealing with local issues, and then dealing with our uh, relationship as well, and then becoming also the school board liaison, although I don't believe it was um, intentional that both positions go to the same person because it has been split in the past, but there was some convenience because of my background with you and having worked with the board, um, in which I'm very, very excited. Um, this past week, I actually did have a wonderful chance to have a sit-down meeting um, with Dr. Antwistle, as well as with Chris and the town manager and myself to talk about how we can begin that dialogue and open that relationship to developing a really strong approach to how we deal not only with finances, but how we govern the town together. Because they're both very important parts of the town, and we want to share in that responsibility. And we've always shared in it. We've just lacked a little bit of communication, or what well, communication maybe in the past has been a little bit challenged. Um, you know, I mentioned the other day when we were talking that decisions usually don't, I don't believe decisions cause conflicts. It's usually the communication that comes out of that decision that causes it. And that's what I'm hoping to work with uh, your chairperson as well as with uh, Councillor Holbrook and, and Chris uh, as well to see how we can calm that rhetoric and really become advocates for both of our budgets because it's a very, very big task. And we know that and um, we share in that with you. And um, so the other piece as well is to kind of give you an understanding because um, unfortunately I was not here in town when the last position was filled, so I'm not sure of expectations that were developed, but I always like setting my own path. And so some items that I've uh, put forward to Ms. Bealey has been, um, the first is that I'd like to set up an actual ongoing regular meeting where her and I can have a cup of coffee to talk about our relationship. Um, as far as I'm concerned, as long as I don't have a quorum of the school board or a quorum of the town council, anyone's welcome for the coffee. 
because um, I want to hear about that relationship so that I can share it privately or if necessary publicly with the rest of the members of the boards. Um, but then also uh, have asked to have interim meetings with management and our boards as well as with uh, Mr. Siazzo as part of the finance committee so that we have really one message coming out of finance. Um, and we have really one message going back that is consistent to my council, um, I should say our council, and to the school board as a whole so that there isn't two different um, underscoring messages going on in the town. And then really the third is to not to be a regular participant in your meetings, but to come maybe once every other um, month. Um, I was going to say once, I almost flipped and said once every other meeting, but um, that might be a little bit too much, but at least to come and uh, field any questions and, um, you know, to give me a heads up on any issues and maybe I can answer questions publicly so that the public can be involved in that dialogue as well. Um, one of the items that we did, um, and I know Mr. Siazzo is going to be talking a little bit about it, we have talked about our first finance committee meeting um, and having it in a joint, even though I took the lead to get it started because I really wanted to come out of the, uh, the gate really pushing hard, um, is to really have a joint workshop where we talk about what are our expectations, what, what are the areas of improvement. We've taken actually the same survey that Dr. Antwistle provided to you and I've shared it with my board and they're going to be providing back feedback and we're going to combine those together and look at what our commonalities are, see if there's opportunities where we might just be off by one or two little pieces of information that can actually find a new resolution and then really identify where we want to move forward so that we can have a stronger relationship with you um, and, a, a, and really develop stronger results for the entire community as a whole. Um, but then the last and final piece is obviously interaction with the entire board. Um, my number and my email are always open. I have an open door policy. You're welcome to give me a call. Please don't call the house after 8. Um, that was one of the concessions, concessions, uh, concessions I had to make with my wife this time around. Um, so uh, um, I gave her permission to buy one of those blow horns that she's going to blow into the phone. So be careful if you call after 8 o'clock at the house, but you're welcome to call me on my cell phone. You get some really wild calls in this town, so uh, um, it can be very, very interesting. But uh, you are always welcome to give me a call. I'm always around town to have a cup of coffee um, or to find lunch. And um, well, with that, uh, Ms. Bealey, I just want to say thank you very much for being open. And, and Dr. Antwistle, it was wonderful meeting you. Um, and I do have to, of course, mention the joke that I mentioned. That my daughter actually, as a wonderful student of a different district, and particularly Cape Elizabeth, actually had a run-in with uh, Dr. Antwistle when he was chairman of the board. <laughs> and the reason is that as uh, chairman of the board, but also as a board member, you have those difficult decisions of what you must uh, eliminate or reduce. And my daughter was actually captain of the uh, state mock trial team for Cape Elizabeth in which they were contemplating student activities there as well. So uh, she heard, or I should say he heard uh, a babine tongue once before. Um, she was extremely polite and wonderful and I promise that I plan on doing the same. So thank you very much. I'm going to hold you to that. Absolutely, sir. But thank you very much. Thank you. 7.0 is a committee report. Uh, you'll notice we moved the, co the committee reports up a little bit earlier in uh, our program so that uh, I think there's a lot of important work going on there and those things need to be heard. So, Ms. Perry? Yes, thank you. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, please. Negotiations uh, first. Uh, the uh, team will meet uh, with uh, the administrative team on the 9th and with the custodians on the 17th, both in December. We, uh, those are the only two groups that we will be negotiating with this year. Hallelujah, brother. Uh, I also have uh, on the 13th, as a representative of Maine School Boards, I will be a participant in a panel uh, with the SAD 6 Board of Directors uh, helping them with some boardsmanship, you know, I think they have 14 or 15 members of their board of directors and uh, evidently uh, have had some reasons to wonder how they should conduct themselves. So the director and associate director of MSBA will be coming down and uh, I will be among uh, three active school board members who are members of the board of directors of main school boards who will help them out and answer questions. So we'll spend the morning, if it doesn't snow, on the 13th. And then 
on uh, what date is it? The 12th, December 12th. We'll have a teleconference uh, with the uh, legislative committee of Maine school boards, and uh, moving proactively, we hope to set an agenda for the legislature uh, addressing concerns from the commission to strengthen in, uh, the adequacy and equity of certain cost components of school funding formula, right, charter school funding, which is always in the forefront of all of us who are getting whacked with that cost, and general purpose aid funding and the governor's budget release January 9th. On the labor, uh, evidently the legislature is considering uh, under Section 13201, changing the probationary period from three to seven years. Don't faint. Just change to three. Sustain changing the statute <coughs> of obligation to bargain use of private contractors and the discussion of a statewide teacher's contract. So under proficiency diploma, reducing the number of areas required. So these are all evidently topics in the forefront of the legislature that we as a, your representatives will be discussing in our legislative committee meeting. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lang. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to the first eye observation training today at the um, middle school with all the 20 some teacher volunteers. That was a very, you know, I was very fortunate, you know, meeting the first time and see what the system can do. Um, it's actually more than an evaluation, actually, I realize. It's actually also an educational system. Yeah, you have um, different modules and you can put Set your own professional goals. You can track it. You can take the um, watch video. If even for different topics and different grades, you have pro, you know kind of corresponding um, you know material you can learn from them. I think it uh, looks like very exciting, and it seems like the teachers uh, uh, enjoy the learning process. So um, I was I'm very excited to be part of it. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the Bago Education Alliance meeting for December has been canceled, so um, um, January is their next one. So, okay, thank you. Yes, Ms. Murphy. So we got iced out of our policy meeting yesterday, but um, our previous meeting we discussed. Um, we're still going through the policies we just have, <laughs> but don't have to have. They're not required. They're not recommended, but just policies we have in our book. We did go back and review some um, that had recently been evaluated, including uh, communications, how the school department communicates with particularly parents, um, and making some changes, just modernizing it, more electronic, and how we are going to deal with um, outside groups who would like to reach the target audience <laughs> of students and parents. So we're um, working on that policy. There's also one about security cameras and there's a question of whether or not that should be a policy or administrative procedure. So we're figuring that out. Um, and there's also another policy that we're discussing about what um, materials can be distributed at school events, mm -hmm. like a football game or even a dance, I guess, or whatever. So will we allow other people to distribute information, whether it's school related or not? Um, so that's also on our agenda. So we will now meet um, on the 17th at 9.30. Um, we're trying to meet every two weeks, and we were supposed to meet yesterday but got iced out. And then also this morning we had, um, as a subgroup of the Health, Safety, and Security Task Team, the climate, school climate and culture, I think we just had our last meeting today because we had accomplished our goals. And the small little task force was about really seeing how, what was going on in the schools as far as risky behaviors and bullying and we really used this um, Maine Integrated Youth Health Survey that's uh, from Maine Public Health. They, they administer the test and our students are due to take it again in the fall at 
through 12th graders take it. Um, and so now there's actually a team um, at the high school that has developed from our work. So we've kind of made ourselves obsolete, which is great. So we're kind of blending into other into other teams. So it's no longer a necessary um, subcommittee. And also the facilities group has also melted into other groups because everything we can do with facilities right now has been handled as technology far as and facilities. technology and facilities. So all the new um, security doors have already been installed and extra security cameras. And so all of these things have happened. And so kind of like a little graduation. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, that we've, done, uh, we've done a lot of work in that committee. So um, our, our next big target we talked about was uh, what might come out of the community dialogue and what parents and teachers and students are interested in, things that might um, give us a new focus. So it was good. It was a good meeting. That's it. Very good. That's it. Uh, communications, we also did not meet yesterday, um, not specifically because of the ice, but we um, will meet again on the 14th. That meeting will be mm -hmm. after policy, um, so probably 10.30. 14th or 17th? Uh, 17th, sorry. Okay. And one of the things that has sort of come up in the last couple of weeks, Donna has been in touch with Chief Thurlow, who has a regular column in the leader, and he has agreed to allow us to jump into that column um, on a regular basis. So going forward, every you know four, five, six weeks, we'll have um, a regular column in the leader. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Casso. Uh, finance is busy as usual. Um, quite a few things to talk about. The, um, we've decided to fix the dates for future finance committee meetings. They will be at 6 p.m. before the first business meeting of the board. So that's every, the first Thursday, I think, of every month, um, just for continuity's sake. So um, they are open to the public. Anybody's able to attend, uh, that, that wishes to attend, if we have a small enough audience, it's usually up in the uh, superintendent's conference room. If we have a larger audience and can't accommodate that uh, upstairs, we, we can always move to a different location, whether it's Chambers B or down here. Uh, but for future going forward, it will be at 6 p.m. Uh, every Thursday, the first Thursday of every month before our regularly scheduled business meeting. Please, though, keep looking at the website because if it is canceled for whatever reason, that's where we will post it and that's where the notifications will go out. Um, Councillor Baybine, uh, as he mentioned, there's going to be a meeting on December 10th. Um, it's going to be between four, uh, from 4 to 5.30, I believe, in Chambers A down here, or I'm not sure where exactly it's going to be. It's yet. somewhere in this building. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, the, the agenda will be posted. The agenda is coming out. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm personally very uh, enthusiastic about moving forward. We've been, I know we've been working very strongly for the past couple of years trying to get this process working. Uh, it's very refreshing and uh, encouraging to hear the responses from Councillor Baybine. As he mentioned, we sat down with Dr. Entwistle and Tom Hall, uh, had a very productive discussion, a very cordial and, and very professional discussion. I was very encouraged by that. And uh, um, I think we've set the tone. Uh, I hope that that tone continues. And I'm, I'm looking forward to some really positive results that we get from that. I think it's uh, Councilor Baybine hit it on the head. It's, it's our town. We, we've got to move forward collectively together. We've got to find ways to manage and govern and secure the resources that we need, both on the town side and on the school side. So very much looking forward to that. Unfortunately, um, I don't want to set off on the wrong foot right out of the chute, but uh, I will be out of town on December 10th for the first meeting. I'm traveling on business, but Donna uh, Beely will be there. Christine will be there. Dr. Entwistle, and I believe maybe Kate Bolton from our side as well will be there. So we'll be very well represented. I'm very, very confident that um, we'll be able to still have a very productive meeting and look forward to the results moving forward. Uh, the Finance Committee did meet, which most of you were present, but for the public's information, we're working on setting some goals for next year. Um, we, we have a, a list of um, many, many, many potential goals. We're going to filter through those, and I'm hoping that we'll have something more firm and, and solid to report out to the, the entire board for the next meeting. Um, as an aside, I was also the liaison on the, the um, for lack of a better word, the hockey committee. 
Um, and I did want to report out, I'm not sure if the council has had their meeting regarding that already. They probably have. Yeah. yeah. Um, it also was a very encouraging setting. Um, we were well represented. Mr. Legage was there as well from, from the administration side. Uh, Councilor Donovan was there. Uh, Bruce Gulliver was, was, was facilitating the meeting. Again, very cordial, very professional, very good meeting. Um, uh, the library was there represented. I thought it was a very good collaborative effort, and um, I, I think what came out was the definition of a real compromise. It wasn't the perfect spot, I don't think, for anybody, but I think after all was said and done, we weighed traffic, we weighed, safe, weighed safety and things like that, and with the understanding that it's extremely preliminary, um, but it at least gives some guidance moving forward for the Friends of the Hockey Group to, to move forward with their plans. So. Um, everything is still has to go through the normal processing. Nothing is set in stone, but I think it was important both for the hockey group, for us, and also for the council as well to get some some definitive action and 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 some some real understanding of what the location needs to be. So, um, very very pleased with that outcome, and uh, and looking forward to another opportunity to be able to do that again. Um, that that's pretty much it, I think. Um, we'll. Um, continue along again for the finance committee. Everybody's more than welcome to attend, as we said, and um, I'll make sure the agenda goes out at least uh, a week or so before that that meeting schedule. Good, thank you. Do we have any school reports tonight, Emma? Yes, I haven't been in contact with Kristen now, so I don't have the middle school or high school report, but I have Wentworth and okay. primary schools. Um, Wentworth had their most successful book fair ever done this November. They raised over $14,000 worth of books, and um, they made a profit of 3500 So they will use this money to pay for author visits, buying more books, and they'll fund uh, a conference for the library ed techs. Um, they're asking Sarah Thompson to come speak to all the students in March, and she's an author um, from Portland. Also, um, an expert on learning commons, David Lurscher, came from Salt Lake City to visit the learning commons on November 18th. He teaches at the graduate level and travels the world helping people plan learning commons. Several of his books on learning commons had been consulted during the process of building it this summer. And as he left the school, he complimented Wentworth's Learning Commons to be the most fantastic space he has seen. So I thought that was amazing. And in all, in all the schools, the Beanie Baby Drive has, um, to benefit Partners for World Health, has began, begun this week. Lillian Finley, who came to present to us last week, or last meeting, excuse me, she has organized this for her second year in a row. And boxes were placed in the main offices of all the schools, and collection will continue through the 12th of December. Um, the Beanie Babies will be shipped to orphanages to bring gifts to the unfortunate children this holiday season. I've already heard students in the high school talking about the Beanie Baby Drive, and I just think it's wonderful that we're already hearing that um, kids are excited to bring in their old be Beanie Babies and support them. Um, on an aside, I'd like to... Um, talk about the coding, the hour of code that's going on. Um, when, the, when I took the technology for the 21st century class in freshman year, my favorite part of that class was learning about the codes. And I just think it's amazing that there, we're dedicating like a whole two hours of this to the younger kids. I think it's something that not, we don't like know how to do that yet. Like when we're learning about the other things that were taught in the technology for the 21st century class, we kind of already knew how to do them, how to set up an email, how to set up a Prezi. That's kind of, we kind of know how to do that already. So I think it's great that um, we're learning the codes, and that was my favorite part. So I'm very excited about that. That's awesome. Great. Thank you. And Dime Poido, recognition? I just have, yes, I do have a, a couple of items. Um, this is uh, from the middle school, seventh grade math team, and that would include Connor um, Kanatsi, Wesley Chalmers, Lucas Hofsis, Charlie Lang, Bambi Joang, uh, Jacob Parody, Emily Huntington. Um, they all placed second in their very first team competition at the middle, and that was held at the middle school of the Kennebunks on December 2nd. 
and um, of special note, uh, Lucas Hofsis and Charlie Lang uh, tied for third place uh, with their individual scores across the whole competition. So congratulations to all of our math scholars. Um, I was wishing that our friend uh, Kristen Murray was here because I wanted to also recognize her as Scarborough Fall Athlete of the Year. And uh, so we have a celebrity, celebrity among us. She was the female um, Athlete of the Year. The male was Drew Kane, and uh, Drew is a junior golfer. Um, and so uh, congratulations to both Kristen and to Drew. Thank you. And a new business, 10.1. Minutes of November 20th. Do I have a motion? Move to approve as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven plus one. 10.2 appointments. The high school co curricular appointments. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Any discussion? We've all seen. Do yeah. we have any idea? Are there? High school, yes. Um, more coaches. Uh, we're done with co-curricular. You, you knew there was going to be. I have it written down right here, Mrs. <laughs> Bassingo. Thank you. It was either going to come from that side or from this side. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking turns. Shame on me if we're I were to, folks to miss here. it by this time. <laughs> yes. And what I don't know, Kelly knows. So <laughs> together, we're ready. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. You're Any welcome. other questions? All in favor? 7.1. Thank you. 10.2.2. Middle school winter coaching appointments. The motion? Move approval. Second. Discussion? Chris? <laughs> Just down, yes, Mr. Sure. Chiazza, there are more coaches, and no, we are done with co-curricular. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Entwistle. You're welcome. We're, we're almost not even having to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? All in favor? Seven, seven plus one? Mrs. Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to point out that our athletic uh, teams start their winter season this weekend. And I also believe just hopping on... Uh, Ms. Perry's comment that we will have our uh, celebration of um, the fall athletes um, at your next meeting. Next meeting. Good. Okay. There's a lot to celebrate. And there's a lot to celebrate. At the workshop. Yes, yes it will just okay. be in advance of the workshop, I believe. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments from anyone on the board? Seeing none, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I want to get a vote. Oh, uh, to vote to end it. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I had it okay. all down pat. You had it right to the end. <laughs>